Hello and welcome to Tennessee's at home learning series for literacy. Today's lesson is for all our second graders out there, although everyone is welcome to join. This lesson is the third in our series. I'm Mrs. Ledford and I teach second graders at Prescott South Elementary School in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Today, we will learn more about what makes an insect an insect by reviewing our initial predictions or educated guesses, and finally confirming or debunking our initial predictions based on today's learning. Wow, this sounds like a lot of fun, investigative learning. I can't wait to work on this today. Before we get started, to fully participate in our lesson, you will need something to write with, something to write on, and a hard surface. Just one piece of paper today. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on our website at www.tn.gov education. Our previous lessons are on our website at www tn.gov slash education. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen our others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about a text we read previously. Okay, let's begin. Today you will hear some very important vocabulary words. These words will help us better understand what we are reading about. Let's check out a few of these vocabulary words now. The first word we're going to learn today is abdomen. You say it. Abdomen. The word is a noun, which means it's a person place, or thing. The definition is the end part of the insect's body, the body segment that contains the digestive and reproductive structures. An example of this word is the abdomen is the largest body part of most insects. You might hear the plural form abdomens. Do you notice the difference between my word, the singular version, and the plural word, abdomens? Yes, the S at the end of the word makes my word plural. Right now, it's the singular version, meaning only one. Excellent. The next thing we're going to learn today, the next vocabulary word we're going to learn today, is the word exoskeletons. You say it exoskeletons. Wonderful. This word is also a noun, which means it's a person, place, or thing. The definition of this word, exoskeletons, is the stiff body coverings of insects, providing support and protection. Skeletons on the outside of the body. An example would be the thick exoskeletons on beetles protect them from being squashed by larger animals. Do you think the word exoskeletons is singular or plural? Hmm. Well, it ends in an S, so that gives us a clue. If you said plural, you are correct. Give yourself a pat on the back. What if I were talking about a singular version of the word exoskeletons? Yes, I would just take that S off and it would be exoskeleton. Very good, there would be only one. Great job. The next vocabulary word we are gonna learn today is the word thorax. And this word is also a noun, which means it's a person, place, or thing. You say the word thorax at home. Great job. The definition of this word is the middle part of the insect's body between the head and the abdomen. The body segment that contains the heart and the leg attachments. 
An example of this word would be Joshua's favorite dragonflies have a bright green thorax. You might even hear the plural forms thoraxes or thoraces. Now that we know some important vocabulary words, when you hear me read those vocabulary words today, you're going to throw up a V for vocab. So if you hear any of our new words today, I'll throw up a V for vocab. Let's begin. So we're going to start by reviewing some things we've already learned. Do you remember the largest group of animals on earth? Hmm. If you said insects, do a little happy dance. Great job. Remember that the fly in, was the narrator in our previous read aloud, and he introduced you to a variety of insects that live in nearly every part of our world. But can you remember the one habitat that does not have any insects living in it? That's right. Oceans. If you said oceans, do a little happy dance in your seat. Great job. Oceans are the only one habitat that do not have insects. Now, one more question. What is the difference between social, and I'm going to pull up our old vocabulary word card, social and solitary insects? I'm trying to give you a clue. What is the difference between social and solitary insects? If you said social insects live in groups, like in our little illustration, and solitary live alone or sometimes in pairs, then you are correct. Good memories. All right, boys and girls. Um, let's look at a coll this collage of insects once more. As we look at it, I want you to try to name some ways in which these insects are different from one another. Hmm, look at this picture. What do you notice? If you said that some of these insects are walking or crawling, whereas some of these insects have wings, that's an excellent observation. Now, look at this picture again and try to name some of the ways that the insects are similar or alike to one another. Well, I'm noticing that several of them have six legs. That's something that we can notice. I bet you guys are listing even more examples in ways that they are alike. Some of them are on host plants that we learned about last time. Nice job listing all the ways that they're similar to one another. Good job today, boys and girls. Now today, we're going to learn what all insects have in common. And the last time we read, you made a prediction about how all insects are alike and what they have in common. So before we read today, I want you to revisit that prediction. And if you haven't yet made a prediction, we're going to make one right now. So we're going to use that piece of paper that you got out today. And I want to challenge you to try to create on your paper two ways that, um, two predictions. So you're going to create two predictions today about what we're reading. And what you're predicting is about what all insects have in common or what makes an insect an insect. So I want you to try to write two predictions now. And I'm going to give you a quiet minute to think and to write. And if you think that's easy peasy lemon squeezy, then I'm going to challenge you to write your predictions in complete sentences with a capital letter and an N mark. And so what you can do if you're writing in a complete sentence is you're going to turn my question around into a statement. So my question is, what do you predict makes an insect an insect? So you can turn that around and make it a telling statement. Like, I predict blank makes an insect an insect. Okay, I'll give you a quiet minute to write down two predictions, 
And if you need a challenge, you're going to try to write those predictions in complete sentences with capital letters. Okay, you get started and I'll work on mine. I'd love for you to share your predictions with me. Um, go ahead and read me your prediction, what you wrote. And I am going to read some of my predictions to you. So I've written mine out. And remember I told you that I was gonna to try to write them in a complete sentence. And I was gonna take my question, what would you predict makes an insect an insect? And so then I wrote, I predict that having wings makes an insect an insect. And I predict that stinging people makes an insect an insect. If you agree with me, show me your agree sign. And I also predicted that having six legs makes you an insect. Show me the agree sign if you agree with me. And I also predicted that not living in an ocean makes an insect an insect. Okay, boys and girls, so today what I want you to do is while I'm reading, I want you to be listening carefully for all the things that insects have in common or what makes an insect an insect. Because at the end of the story, we're going to go back and we're going to see if your predictions are confirmed, show me confirmed, or debunked. All right, boys and girls, let's get started. What makes an insect an insect? All right, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. The last time you gathered to learn about insects, you were joined by a fly, an insect with whom you are surely familiar with. I am also a very common insect that loves to live in bathtubs or underneath kitchen sinks. My cousins and I often hide during the day, so you may not notice us. Does anyone know what type of insect I am? I am a cockroach. Do you think I look anything like a fly? Well, there are millions of insects on Earth. At first glance, we may look very different from one another. What are some of those differences that you see? And what are some ways we are the same? Good job. Well, some insects, like butterflies and grasshoppers, have wings, whereas others, like fleas and microscopic lice do not. Some eat plants and others eat animals, but all insects have certain features in common. So I'm here to talk with you about what makes an insect an insect. Our name should give you a clue. An insect's body is built in sections or parts. Three parts to be exact. We'll use one of my friends, the ant, as an example. All insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head is the center of an insect's senses, but different kinds of insects have very different looking heads. The thorax is the middle part of the insect's body, and the abdomen is the end of the insect's body, furthest away from its head. The word microscopic, you say it, microscopic, refers to things that are very, very small and can only be seen well with a microscope. 
Listen to these two words. What, what part of these words both sound familiar? Insect section. I'll say them again. What sounds familiar about both of those words? Insect section. If you said insect sec. I say that part in both words. That's what makes those words so similar, isn't it? What do you notice about the heads of these common insects? Do they look anything like your head? Well, do they have eyes? Yes, they do, but they are very different from your eyes. For one thing, many insects have more than two eyes. Most insects, like this cricket, have big eyes located on the side of its head. Many insects also have smaller, simple eyes on the tops of their heads. Look closely at the cricket's head, though. Can you see its eyes? Although, let's see, can you see its eyes? Although some insects see better than others, most insects also use other senses to get information about their environment. Look at this bush cricket. Does it have a mouth? Yes, its mouth is a small hole at the front of its head, surrounded by other mouth parts. You and the cricket both use your mouths to taste and to eat. Look at the variety of insect mouth parts. I'll show you the mouth parts on these insects. What do you notice? Some look like sponges, others look like scissors or even needles. An insect's mouth is carefully designed for eating certain types of foods. Some insects bite and chew solid foods. Other insects suck liquids. Still, others pierce their food. For example, cockroaches like me eat just about anything we can find. We have two pairs of jaws for biting, cutting, and chewing food well. Other insects, like the tiny aphids that destroy the farmer's crops, have mouth parts that look more like drinking straws. They feed by sucking sap from plant leaves and stems through these tubes. Look how long and sharp the mosquito's mouth part is, perfect for piercing the skin of its prey and sucking its blood. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? I have, and they love to feed on people as well as other animals like horses and birds. Butterflies and bees have long mouth parts for sucking nectar and flower. What are some of the parts of your mouth called? Yes, you got it. Tongue, teeth, taste buds, and lips. Let's look at this picture. Look closely. Can you see the monarch butterfly's mouth parts? It's working like a straw to suck nectar from this flower. There it is. Can you see it? All right, so now that you've seen an insect's eyes and mouth, what else do you think would be on the head of an insect? What about those long feelers? Those are the insect's antennae. Their most important sense organs. You say it, antennae. Very good. They, the insect's antennae come in a variety of shape and sizes and help insects learn more about their surroundings. These jointed feelers, such as those on this cricket, are often covered with tiny bristles and pegs, and some are even quite feathery. Antennae are primarily used for smell and for touch. Hmm. So, do you see a nose on this cricket? Hmm. 
No, at least nothing that looks like our nose, do you? Instead of a nose, this cricket uses its antennae to smell. So we've talked about eyes, mouth, and antennae. What else would you expect to find on an insect's head? Well, think about our five senses. What other sensory organ do you have on the side of your head? We have sight, taste, smell, touch, right, your ears. Do you see ears on this cricket? No, the cricket's ears are actually located on its legs. That's right, attached to the middle section of the cricket's body. And do you remember what that middle section is called? The thorax, good job. Hope you're holding up a V for vocab. The middle section of an insect's body is called the thorax. The thorax has three pairs of jointed legs and usually, but not always, two pairs of wings. Notice I said pair. When you think of a pair, what do you think of? A pair is a two of a specific item. So if you have a pair of socks, you have two socks. If you have a pair of mittens, you have two mittens. Well, if there are three pairs of legs, how many legs does an insect have altogether? Yes, insects have six legs. Now, let's look at the cricket's thorax and see if we can spot its ears. Look just below its knee joint on the front leg. Do you see a smooth patch of skin? I do. Right above, let's see, right here, it's the cricket's eardrum. And that is very important as it communicates with other crickets through sound. The cricket's eardrum bends in and out to catch the sound waves so it can communicate with other crickets. What other body parts do humans use to sense things or learn more about our surroundings? That's right, our ears, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, and our skin. Well, what is the middle part of the insect's body called? That's right, the thorax. Here is the word, here the word patch means a piece of skin covering an opening. The word patch can also mean like an area of land where a particular plant grows, like a pumpkin patch. Okay. So insects' legs vary according to their lifestyle. How do you think the long, muscular back legs of a grasshopper might help it? Right, its legs are designed for jumping to quickly escape danger. Have you ever seen the fuzzy legs of a honeybee covered with yellow clumps of pollen that it carries back to its hive? It's quite a sight. And how do you think the backswimmer beetle's pair of long legs help it in its water habitat? Notice that the oar-like shape of the legs that it uses for paddling. Here's a picture of something you might recognize, a caterpillar. Caterpillars have um, three pairs of true legs on the front part of their bodies but their long bodies also need extra support. So they have several pairs of stubby legs in the back to help them cling to the stems and leaves. These false legs are called pro-legs. You say it. Caterpillars loop along grasping stems with their front legs or true legs before drawing their bodies up into a loop to hold on with their hind legs or pro legs. Only adult insects have wings and some insects do not have wings at all. If an insect does have wings, they are located on the insect's middle section or thorax. Wings allow insects to move quickly from place to place and they surely are one reason insects have survived in large numbers for so many years. Insect wings look different from, very different from one another, 
but a network of veins supports each wings. Each wing. When it's quiet at night, especially in the summer, you might hear, do you recognize this? A cricket. And that chirping noise coming from an insect outside is the cricket's wings. And the wings have veins, boys and girls. The veins of a male cricket's wings are thicker and shaped differently from any other insect. You'll learn more another day about how a cricket uses uses its wings to make unique chirping sounds. Let's think for just a second. If a caterpillar has eight pairs, and a pair is two, how many true legs does a caterpillar have? If you counted by twos eight different times, you would have 16 legs. So a caterpillar has 16 legs. All right, boys and girls, so far we've looked at the insect's head and thorax. Every insect body is made up of three sections. So what is the name of the third section? That's right, the third section is called the abdomen. Do you have an abdomen? Yes, you do. Your abdomen is your belly. And just like an insect, your abdomen is where you digest food or break it down so your body can use it to grow. An insect's abdomen is also the part of its body where the female produces eggs. The abdomen is also where insects breathe. Like you, insects need oxygen or air to live, but they do not have lungs and they do not take in air through their noses and mouths. Instead, if you look at a cricket's abdomen, you will see a line of tiny holes along its side. That is where insects take in air containing oxygen in order to breathe. So what makes an insect an insect? Well, here's your answer. An insect has three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. It also has six legs. Well, most of them do, and most insects have wings. But that's not all. All insects are something we call invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone. Instead, of having a skeleton inside their body, like me and you, they wear their skeletons on the outside. Do you remember what that's called? These waterproof exoskeletons, remember that word from earlier? Hold up your V for vocab. These exoskeletons are worn on their body and they protect. They are made of, um, they're waterproof, and they're made of a flexible material called chitin, and they protect the soft insides like a suit of armor. So just like your backbones and bones, an insect's exoskeleton is the thing to which the insect's muscles attach. All right, boys and girls, here is a picture of a suit of armor. And finally, here's a picture of another one of my cousins. We cockroaches were around long before the dinosaurs. I like to think our exoskeletons may have something to do with our long survival, don't you? I thought so. Next time, the narrator of the read aloud will be an insect that holds its front paws together like this. Can you guess what it is? She'll tell you how insects grow from tiny eggs to into adults. Be prepared to be amazed. Boys and girls, we'll look back at your predictions tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me and learning about insects with me today. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's at-home learning series. Bye-bye.